Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and today we're talking about Kira again. You're in part three of everything I think you should know about Kira and understand. We have gone through all of the basics, but now let's get into some of those trouble areas where we get some stringing and we can see some pillowing. What's pillowing? And then we can also kind of prevent Kira from doing what Kira wants to do sometimes, even though Kira's great, but sometimes we know better. Now, at the end of this video, I am going to be going through one of the settings that I just... I don't feel like it gets enough use. I don't feel like people know about it enough, and I am trying to spread the knowledge. So, guess what? I'm making a video. We're gonna learn about it. So, let's go ahead and get started. So, the next thing I want to talk about is your top layer, and that's in top and bottom. So when it comes to your top layer, you can actually determine how many layers you're going to have on the very top surface of your models. And if you have a very flat surface, I highly recommend increasing your top layers if you can still see your infills. So your top layers is something you might want to look at. I always have five layers because I find for my printers and my nozzles, I get a very smooth, clean top layer. I actually printed out a few different examples to show you what your prints would look like with one top layer all the way up to five top layers. Because I've seen some people with their prints that turned out really nice, but the very top portions, there's like a flat top on it, and you can still see some pillowing on there, which you can get from not enough top layers. Or you can still see the infill. So let's jump over to all of the prints that I did to show you the differences. So here I have one top layer and you can see that it's pretty much you can see through it. This is two top layers, three top layers, four top layers, and 12 top layers. No, I'm kidding, it's five. So you can see here that it really depends on what you do when it comes to top layers. And there's some people that have preferences of like, yeah, I always do like five or six or, you know, I only, I, I quit at three because I don't care. As you can see here that you can actually get some cool effects and sometimes you might want this, but it's good to know what it does because there's not enough filament stretching across to be able to really get a good fill. And if you look, even two, you can't see. You can see that it's also not getting a really good fill because there's still these holes and pits and things like that. But then you get into three, and three is, you know, usually when I hear people having a top layer issue, they're at three, and that means that it's put three layers on. It's covered up those holes, but there's still like you can see, see the infill and then sometimes you get these raised bumps or pits, and that is called pillowing. So if you have some of these issues, I recommend trying to go up another one. Now, four is very nice. There are certain areas that you can still feel some of the actual infill. That's why I always go with five. Five is like super smooth. I can't feel anything here. And... It's just a good, clean print. This was a beautiful top layer. Um, I was actually really happy that my fifth layer version turned out this beautiful. So this is one of those things, if you have a flat surface and that on your model in any way, you really need to focus on this because it's not that huge of a deal when you're, you know, it's got kind of a subtle gradation. Um, and it can just really start to build up because of the wall and the shell. But if it's a flat top and that's your last layer, it really does matter. This is one, this is five, and you can see a big difference. Be sure to adjust those settings and play with those settings because you might find out that four does an amazing job for you and you just leave it there and that's fine. And then you're saving filament. Personally, I'd rather have a clean polished top and not have to worry about all of the sanding or anything else that I might have to do. So check your top layer settings and mess around with those. So the next thing I think you really need to know is retraction. Retraction is one of those things that some people really struggle with just for this reason of they're having temperature issues with retraction issues or 
it's the filament they're using. But it's something that it can be remedied. And if you're new to 3D printing, you're probably wondering, uh, what's retraction? And retraction is that magic little name that prevents stringing. If you have, like, angel hairs or, you know, any kind of fuzz on your 3D prints from stringing, then I'm fairly certain that retraction is one thing that you need to start paying attention to. So if you look here, and I have retraction enabled and retract at layer change, these two are crucial. That you want to have them checked and you want to actually get your distance set properly. And what retraction means is it's retracting the filament when it moves to another area of your 3D print. So if it didn't do that, it would still be oozing filament from the nozzle just because of the heat and the pressure it's been put under. And then it's traveling over there and it's basically causing a tiny little bridge. But it's just a hair. But when you get multiple layers built up, you start to get this fuzzy line. So if we go over here and then we see travels, you see these blue lines? That is the movement of the nozzle. You can see here, once it finishes, the nozzle moves over to the other side of the pillar in this string test. And if you don't have good retraction, you're basically making a wall because you can see all of these travels back and forth and you would be creating this wall of filament. So zero retraction is the same thing of not checking it. And typically you won't ever go higher than 10 for retraction. And if you go over 10, Cura will let you know, depending on what print profiles you have set in place. So this is a test file to actually just test your stringing, and I have a link to this down in the description. But the best part is, I actually 3D printed these at different retraction distances, so you can get a good idea of what retraction is actually doing to your prints. So let's jump over to that. So here is our retraction test, and this is the actual successful print of retraction. It should look like this when you're done and you've got it honed in perfectly now you'll see here that there is no strings no nothing here like there is nothing in between here two sticks basically i printed this at a 10 millimeter retraction so it pulled the filament back 10 millimeters before it moved to the other pole now moving down this was my 6.5, and I usually print at 6.5, but I noticed I was getting a little bit of stringing. I was actually surprised. So you can see a lot of that stringing right there. Now this, by no means, is bad. Getting a little bit like this, I can just hit it with a heat gun for two seconds, and it will all be gone. It'll wither away, and you will be fine, and you'll still have a very clean print. But now this is just doing this task and making this video. I have actually thought about bumping this up to about seven and a half because it's almost there. I mean, almost there to be perfect for my 3D printer. Now, moving down, here is a two millimeter retraction. This is basically just angel hair, like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. This is way too low. And... I would definitely recommend moving it up. And also just to show you what retraction looks like when you turn it off, you basically get a spider web. Now it's it actually pushes out a lot more filament than you think because it's actually still oozing because of the heat and the pressure of when it was printing the pole. So you will see this if you do not have retraction turned on. So this versus this is quite different. So if you're having any stringing issues, I highly recommend to use the retraction setting and play with it. So I have this Han Solo chibi 
that is in carbonite that I'm actually printing out for a future tutorial. The next thing is not a setting in Kira, but a tool in Kira. And this is something that I feel like everybody should know, and I haven't seen a lot of people use this. Maybe just because people aren't aware of it, but to me it is totally a gem. I don't know if it's a hidden gem, but if you know about it, it's a gem. If you don't know about it, this is a hidden gem. So, what this is, is you kind of click on your model, and then you come over here to support blocker. And what support blocker is, you just click it, and then you click on your model anywhere, and it will create this block. And this block is telling Kira, anything inside this cube, do not print supports. And why would you want that? Well, let's just say I know for a fact, because I've already, you know, pre-sliced this to look at it, there's going to be supports on the fingers right here. I don't want to do that. I know my printer can handle that right there. And also, inside here, there's going to be a base that this stands on. I don't want to support inside here 100%. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and click on that box. And then I'm going to get my move tool and then bring it over here and you have all of the same transforms as you do any kind of 3D model. So I can actually scale this up like that to cover the hand and then make it wide. And there we go. So now that hand is encased in that. So I can actually bring it down too to ensure, there we go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to multiply the selected once and make that and bring it on over to this hand. So now those hands are not going to be supported in any way. And then I can see a lot of red underneath here. So, well, maybe it'll put a support there. So I'm going to go ahead and I can multiply that by one. And then I'll just move this box over here, bring it up, and rotate it around. So now I know I'm not going to get any supports there. Now one of the little things and tips that I do, let me multiply this twice, is I will actually take my models when I have these holes right here. Now I definitely want to have it supported, like I'm not fighting that in any way. but there's no reason why I have to have the whole thing supported. So I'm going to click both of these boxes, move them in, and bring them down. So those corners are now not going to have any supports in them. And you're probably wondering, why does that even matter? I'll tell you this. When you're removing supports, if you can do some little things like this to kind of give you a little bit of a hold for your pliers so you can rip them out, instead of it just being one flat wall, it is extremely helpful. So when you're doing holes and things like that, grab a support blocker and just make a little bit of a, a pry spot so you can even put a screwdriver in there to just pop this whole support out. So after I've got this like that, I will be able to print this no problem. The other thing is, is you want to make sure you're not blocking things you want to have supported. So like all of this right here, I definitely want it to be supported. So I'm not going to let it touch it. Okay, so this is all sliced and luckily it's only going to take 3 days, 20 hours, and 45 minutes. Yay! So we're going to go to preview now and let's see what this looks like. You can see that there are no supports on the hands whatsoever, none in the hair. And if we look here, you see those wonderful little gaps where we're going to be able to pull out those supports no problem. So be sure to play around with your support blocker because I guarantee there are some places on models that Kira is adding supports that you do not want them because there's no reason to have supports in areas that you know your printer can handle those certain overhangs. All right, so I have one more tip, and this is probably the most important 
thing in this entire series. And that is to create the most perfect print profile. Pup, pup, pup. That's a lot of peace. Perfect print profile. Try to say that a lot. Uh, to pr create the most perfect print profile, you definitely... To create the most perfect print profile, you need to only adjust one setting at a time. Then test it. That's... It's crucial. In the very beginning, I used to change all of these things. I was like, oh, I'm going to change this and this and this and this. And I was like, oh, still garbage. And my wife with a scientific background, she's like, oh my God, how can you even have proper variables if you don't like test one thing at a time? And I'm like, uh, I, yeah. So guess what? I started printing and testing one thing at a time. And then suddenly I started seeing like, oh wow, this thing really turned out great. I'm like, but this, this side over here sucks. So I've got to fix it. And after I started doing that, I was able to hone my print profile. And it mean, now I'm pretty freaking good with my printers I have now. So only test one thing at a time and listen to your wife. Because that's, that was my valuable lesson I got out of that. All right, so that's part three of this series, but this series doesn't have to end here. Is there other settings or anything else that you want to know in Cura? Leave me some comments below, and I'll go ahead and I can make another video, and we will keep it going. And if it does keep going, I'll put the video right here. If not, I'll just put some really cool videos right here for you to watch. All right, well, I hope you have a good one, and we'll see you in the next video. Now I can't stop thinking of perfect print profile. Perfect print profile. Well,